we were discussing about the digestive system and under that we have mentioned about the buccal cavity, pharynx and the esophagus. Now we will continue from the stomach, what is happening in it. Actually the stomach is a dilated sac like organ. And due to the contractions and relaxations of stomach wall, the bolus is broken down and mixed well. And the resultant is known as chyme. The secretions added to stomach are collectively known as uh, gastric juice. And the components of gastric juice are Hydrochloric acid, HCl, pepsin enzyme, and renin. Again, an enzyme. It is secreted in infants. If we consider the functions of these, hydrochloric acid is important to activate the enzyme pepsin. Hydrochloric acid activates the enzyme pepsin. An enzyme pepsin starts protein digestion. Due to the action of pepsin, proteins are converted into polypeptides. And renin, which is secreted in infants, is important for coagulation of milk. Then, uh, how do we feel hunger? When our stomach is empty, the muscles in the stomach wall continues to contract and when the stomach is empty for a longer time the rate of contractions is also increased it causes a pain and it gives a sense of hunger it is a signal that indicates the need of the food so when we are starving for a period of time what happens is the stomach get, gets ready to digest food as a result the gastric juice is also secreted and it keeps a, an acidic medium inside the stomach due to hydrochloric acid. This is the main reason for gastritis a disease associated with digestive system. At the end we are going to discuss about this. Then you are asked what are the components of chyme which are released into the proximal part of small intestine which we call as the duodenum. So these are uh, the pa partially digested proteins because some of the proteins are converted into polypeptides due to the action of pepsin inside the stomach. There are four partially digested proteins, digested and undigested carbohydrates because carbohydrate digestion initiated inside the buccal cavity. There are starches converted into maltose. So digested and undigested carbohydrates are also sent to the duodenum. Undigested lipids because lipid digestion has not been initiated yet. Water minerals and vitamins. These are the things which are sent to the proximal part of small intestine which we call as the duodenum. Then we will move on to small intestine and I told you it is a long tube which is about 7 meters in length and there are three main parts in it. The C-shaped initial part is known as the duodenum and the middle part is known as the jejunum and the last part which comes in contact with the large intestine is known as the ileum. And here I have drawn a diagram uh, to show uh, the Attachment of stomach and small intestine, the initial part which we call as the duodenum and the two glands, pancreas and 
liver how they are connected so the stomach is opened to the duodenum and the pancreas secretes pancreatic juice and this pancreatic duct is open to the duodenum pancreatic duct is open to the duodenum and the gall bladder gall bladder which is connected to the liver secretes bile secretes bile and that bile duct is also connected to the pancreatic duct and both ducts are open to the duodenum from a single opening so liver produces bile and that bile is stored inside the gall bladder and it is taken through the bile duct and you can see the bile duct is open to the pancreatic duct and both secretions are added to duodenum through a single opening here it says the duct of the pancreas and the gall bladder opens into the duodenum via a single pore then we'll move on to uh, the components in pancreatic juice the pancreatic juice contains uh, trypsin amylase and lipase all these three are enzymes and bile is produced in the liver and it is stored inside the gall bladder the components of bile are bile pigments bile salts bicarbonate ions and water bile pigments bile salts bicarbonate ions and water then uh, the function of bile is bile uh, mix with food and the lipids are broken into small droplets lipids are broken into small droplets and once the bile is mixed with these it gets a large surface area for the enzymes to act on food particles if i repeat due to mixing of bile with food at the duodenum the lipids in food are broken down into small droplets we call this process as emulsification emulsification due to this action enzymes get a greater surface area to act on lipid food enzymes get a greater surface area to act on lipid food so i have answered both the fourth and fifth questions then name the components of intestinal juice which is secreted by the walls of small intestine so the pancreatic juice is secreted to the duodenum and bile is also added to the duodenum and in addition to these the walls of the intestine also secrete intestinal juice these are the components of intestinal juice there are certain enzymes known as maltase sucrase lactase and peptidase in addition to these enzymes mucus is also secreted by the walls of the intestine small intestine so the importance of mucus is it it, it lubricates food and that lubrication is helpful for the food uh, chyme chyme to move along the digestive tract then uh, 
due to the action of pancreatic juice which is secreted by the pancreas first protein is converted into polypeptides due to the action of trypsin earlier also this happened inside the stomach due to the action of enzyme pepsin proteins were converted into polypeptides so the undigested proteins are converted into polypeptides due to the action of trypsin which is secreted by the pancreas then starch digestion was initiated in the buccal cavity there are salivary amylase or tyrolin enzyme was helpful here the amylase enzyme which is present in pancreatic juice converts starch the undigested starch into maltose then the lipids are converted into fatty acids and glycerol due to the action of lipase enzyme then i told you certain enzymes are secreted by the in, uh, intestinal wall as well so these are the action of these enzymes maltose which is a disaccharide all these are disaccharides maltose is converted into glucose due to the action of maltase enzyme sucrose is converted into its monosaccharides glucose and fructose due to the action of sucrase enzyme sucrose and the enzyme acting on sucrose is sucrase and lactose is converted into glucose and galactose due to the action of lactase enzyme then the polypeptides which were resulted due to the uh, protein digestion inside the stomach as well as in the initial part of the small intestine are converted into amino acids which are the basic units of proteins due to the action of peptidase enzyme then uh, you are asked what are the end products of digestion it is clear that carbohydrates are ended up with monosaccharides either glucose fructose or galactose then proteins are ended up with amino acids and lipids are converted into fatty acids and glycerol then uh, you will think that how why doesn't the walls of uh, stomach and intestine are, are not digested due to those enzymes uh, and juices secreted that is because you learned that uh, mucus is secreted by the walls of this uh, stomach and small intestine because of this layer of mucus the uh, wall of stomach and small intestine are protected then the end products of food digestion are absorbed into blood stream but remember the end products of carbohydrate di digestion is directly added into blood stream and end products of protein digestion that means the amino acids are also absorbed to the blood stream directly but the end products of lipids fatty acids and glycerol are first absorbed into the lacteals which are parts of lymphatic system and finally they are added into the blood circulatory system the the absorption of digestive end products into body takes place mainly in the small intestine then we are going to learn about the the small intestine its structure and its function